morning guys well in the spirit of transparency let me show you what happened we were warned about this actually many people warned us about this and uh, I chose to ignore it not ignore it but like I hadn't come up with a solution but in the meantime I kept using it kind of thing anyway can you see it the diesel heater cracked the window like somebody says so you guys who said that you guys all get in I told you so so today right now is time to uh, do some fixing on that so that we can continue using the heater the heater works like the heaters work super good and I'm going to show you a couple of things that I did uh, after I installed this little vent here which I want to take a few minutes uh, but it's so cool you're gonna love it Cool thing about this problem is the the solution for it was pretty easy to do as far as uh, replacing where the vent goes and we'll come up with something for the other vent soon but I haven't just haven't figured it out yet but maybe just inline pump from this area I'm not sure so we're going to put a little vent right here <laughs> Cool. The diesel heater came with two vents like this each, so I have a total of four of these. I've used one in the bedroom. I'm about to use this one here, and uh, I'm actually really disappointed. Like it, that was such a major disappointment that we cracked the windshield. And while getting a windshield and the school bus repaired isn't necessarily like impossible, I just try not to think about it because it's hurting my soul. Anyway. This is a good solution. I want to come up with some kind of solution that can still blow air into that to help defrost the windows, but I just haven't come up with a good solution yet. So, but I, I have some ideas and we'll try it. If I do it, I'll show you. It's pretty easy to install these things. You just like put some screws in it. Like it's, I don't think I need it. I didn't film it, but it wasn't like this great thing I had to do. Now I gotta get that back on. And I always have trouble with that. All right, set that down. Ready? One, two. Oh, come on now. I know you'll go in. There. And it turns, okay. So now we can shoot it in here down the hallway, down or over this way towards the driver-ish, up into the air. So it's kind of a cool, it's kind of a cool way to do it. I, I do like these things. They're not, they're not bad. I just like the other one. It was way more elegant, and I'm sad that it, it came to that. But we broke a windshield. So thank you guys for telling me. I apologize to you guys for not listening. Okay, now we got to hook this bad boy to that bad boy right there. It's pretty easy. This isn't the hose that it came with. Oh, I might be able to get away with that. Let's try. Ow. Okay. This may or may not work. We'll see. This is not quite on. But if this tightens down good enough, then it should hold it on pretty well. It won't move. No. Yeah. That looks pretty good. Let's try it. Ah. So now is a good time for me to talk about my the level of nerdiest nerdiness that I have. So the diesel heaters both came with these little dudes right here. 
and there's one for each one so I have them marked one and two one's in the front two's in the rear they are not infrared remotes they're 433 megahertz remotes and so that means they're wired like uh, like a radio not a light and I'm like huh that's kind of cool so then I was like you know what would be really cool is if I could control these heaters a little more elegantly than the little LCD screen that it comes with. While the LCD screen that it comes with works really well so far, it's not, I don't want to have to get up and down. That's what I'm saying. I don't have to get up and down to set these things. Um, there's some controversy as to if you let them run on low for too long that they will build up carbon inside and not work again and you have to take them apart and clean them to get them to work but then there's other people say no if you just tune it just right using a carbon di carbon monoxide meter on the exhaust you can get them so they don't do that I don't have one of those yet I'm going to because I do want to do that tuning because the idea of taking these out and taking them apart sucks in the meantime though I still wanted to be able to control the heaters in a more uh, centralized fashion so what I did is I got super nerdy. Let me show you. That's a Raspberry Pi. It's inside the shower here behind the wall because on this side is a standard Honeywell normal home, programmable home uh, thermostat. Runs on AAA batteries. Lasts for years on AAA batteries. This, however, is powered by this little five volt adapter that's plugged into our 12 volt power. The whole thing draws less than an amp. It's pretty good. What this does is when the thermostat comes on, that Raspberry Pi sends out a 433 megahertz signal to the heaters, which I was able to capture and then replay. So now when I come over here to test this thing, let's just go here. I have it set to 55 so the thing's off. Let's go up here and we'll set it to 70. Boom, you heard the click come over here so now I don't know if you can see it or not the fan is on and it started it's now starting its startup cycle so and also the one in the back did the same thing this whole thing was so it would turn on the front and the back here is based on the thermostat okay let's talk about efficiency for a second when the diesel heaters turn on, they draw roughly 10 amps each for about three or four minutes. Okay, so it's drawing 20 amps on startup. After it really gets going and hot air's blowing and it turns off the glow plug, that'll drop down to three or four amps while the temperature difference between the uh, where you want it to be on this thermostat and where it's at are great so if it's like 50 degrees in your bus and this is set to 70 it's going to run on high high so it'll be at three or four amps the whole time the interesting thing is this when it gets to the right temperature what it does is attempts to hold it there by running in a very low setting you're still burning diesel at a very slow rate but you're also uh um running it like 0 0.8 0 0.7 amps so very little so for one and a half amps i can keep the bus to heated all night using a little bit of diesel that's a good bang for your buck the question though is do i want it to just sit there and run one and a half amps all night long and heat us if we can't use the wood stove or do i want to use this thermostat and have it turn on and off every say uh you know 40 minutes or so but using 20 amps during that period of time for three or four minutes well I didn't just like decide what I did is I did the math and let the math decide for me and the math says keep it on the math easily says keep it on um, it keeps it very low so now you know what am I gonna do with this stupid thermostat right well it's not out of the question yet because 
most of the time we'll be using the wood stove. Now, depending on the size of the wood stove we have or are able to put in here, will dictate greatly um, how long the wood stove will burn. Um, but there's clearance issues and stuff like that, and that's for another video. So, what I'm gonna do is set it so that in the morning time, when I'm waking up to go to work, that the diesel heaters come on and precede me waking up and warm up the area for a short period of time up until the point that the wood stove is turned on. So what does that entail? If I set this thing to 70 degrees for a morning wake up and I set the uh, thermostat, the main thermostat at say 75, then this thing will turn on and it'll keep it at about 70 degrees and the main, it'll never reach the main thermostat temperature to shut off until it reaches some time hack on a programmable thermostat where then it shuts off because of uh, the time. So then it drops down like we want it to be at 50, it kills everything and won't come back on to the next morning. That's kind of what I'm looking at right now. I don't know if that makes sense. Well, there it is. That was a pretty easy fix. I can blow that out of my seat now. I could blow it up in the air. I could blow it towards the floor down there and let it drift down the floor and heat up the bus more evenly. Next thing we're doing is mounting this thing. So it's actually mounted. So yeah, I'm, I'm okay with this. I am sad that we broke the windshield. I am sad that the vent idea didn't work but we'll come back to that i'm sure all right turning off the should be turning that off still on it is yep now it's off okay now it's safe to work on well guys i will tell you this that we read every comment like we said we sit there and day after day, we go through them, we read them to each other. It's a lot of fun. Um, but special thanks to Ray DePold, Paul Fillion, and Jason328D, who called me on my laziness and told me about maybe I should put uh, electrical boxes with my uh, plugs. So this is for you guys. Thank you. There's five different places I'm putting these in. Fine. Okay, so we're taking off this one. And we're putting on one of these. We just bought these ones today. It was $27 worth of these little things. But these ones are like dual metal, like we'll cut a nail, that type of thing. The funny thing, and the carrier I were talking about this, like she was kind of making fun of me when I bought this tool. Like, what are you gonna use it for? You know, one thing. And it, we've been using this thing like so much to cut so many different types of holes and stuff. And honestly, that's what I thought I was gonna happen too. I was going to use it once. <laughs> oh, that's loud. It is a but very loud Tell tool. me that was not awesome right there. That was absolutely Man, precision. That new blade is everything. Surgical precision. It was surgical. Like, if you need your spleen out, give me a call. I am your man. Yeah, he's obviously. Al he's already taken mine out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For fun. <laughs> no, seriously, I don't have a spleen. No spleen. How else do you cut a piece of wood like straight through like that? Ta da! Like, easy peasy, man. Oh, my ears are all. Should have worn hearing protection. Right? I feel like I'm better on the next one, so I have hearing tomorrow. Yeah, you have to do this five times. These ones have more. Ah, oh, that looks so much better. Wait. That looks so much better. <laughs> it looks, wow, it looks exactly the same as it did a minute ago. Nah, it looks much straighter. Crazy. It was a drunken switch plate cover before, or outlet cover, whatever it's called. I 
Is it still on? Uh -huh. Just Baby, kidding. you scared the crap out of me. <laughs> oh, that is it. Revenge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm itching for that. It scared me like in my stomach. My whole stomach like clenched into a tiny little ball. Totally in an good. instant. In an instant. Oh, that was good. Oh, God, no. I never get to get you like that. That was great. That was horrible. <laughs> All right, my pencil's gone. Dang it. It's on the floor where you dropped it. Why would my pencil be down there? <laughs> my pencil likes me. Clearly not, it freaking jumped. <laughs> <laughs> jumped to its death. <laughs> you know what just happened? <laughs> Total bummer. <laughs> Dang it. Can't believe you guys made me break that. No, I'm just real upset. Yep, here too. Yep. The other places that have plugs, like back here on this side of the bed, and also on the other side of the bed, those already have metal boxes in them, so they're good. Oh, there's to go. a metal box here. Oh, this one has a metal yeah. box. Yeah. It's just behind the scenes. You just forgot you had done it on this one? This one next. Good. Being a responsible adult. Switch plate cover. I mean, a outlet cover. What do you call it? What is that thing really named? Outlet cover. Outlet I'd say outlet cover. cover. Sure. All right, we'll stick with that. All right, let's watch to see if we get a green light when I turn it on. Green light. All right. Four down, one oh. to go. How many? We got one thingy left. Those have boxes. Huh? All those have boxes. That was for the bedroom, but we already had a box. That's for the right behind you. Show me where. The light switch. Didn't you count? You know, one? we can totally do that. That's a good idea because I can move it over. I thought you counted one of those while we were in. Did not, but you know what? That is a fantastic idea. That's so awesome. I love it. That new blade has changed my life. <laughs> Okay. Well, that was really smart of you to come up with that idea of putting that in there. Good. I thought that's what you meant it for. Yeah, this is a 12 volt receptacle, so I'm not. It didn't really need it. Concerned about it bursting into flames. But it would definitely pop one of our tiny little fuses over there. But now we got a switchblade on it. Okay, so. I think we have fixed everything that our fans have pointed out needed to be taken care of, right? Yes. But if we're missing anything, let us know in the comments below. It's your job as our fans <laughs> to keep us in line. Thank you, Ray, Paul, and Jason again for pointing that stuff out that I'm a lazy butt. You're an electrical hazard. I He's am. a hazard to our health. I am hazardous. I was in the infantry. I'm supposed to kill things. <laughs> Just not at home, I guess. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Wish us luck. <laughs> I know you miss
me so 